Hi and welcome back to our little series, the pros and cons of shiny hunting. Today we take a look at Generation 5, the game set in Unova. Coming out in 2010 in Japan and 2011 here in the West, those games really divided the fanbase back in the day and even by quite a bit today. Some say that this soft reboot of the series was a complete failure. Others really enjoyed them more than ever, being the most story-driven Pokemon games up to this point. Them being basically the last regular DS Pokemon titles. Let's see why you should hunt in them, or why you should not. Pros Wild Double Battles You may think, oh it's just Generation 5, the Pokemon designs are sh it's just a cheap reboot of Kanto, why should I bother hunting there? The first and most important reason lies in the double encounter system. Every time you encounter a Pokemon in those games, in the dark grass areas in black white or black and white too, there is a chance that you will encounter two Pokemon at the same time. This doesn't mean that your odds are higher to encounter a shiny Pokemon technically, as it is still the one in 8192 but you encounter more Pokemon at the same time. And more encounters are always a good thing. The Chiny Charm Personally, I don't like using the Chiny Charm at all, but for those of you who want to have better chances of obtaining a Shiny Pokemon without using the Methuda method, Generation 5 introduced us to something which would become a standard item since then. The Chiny Charm What's the shiny charm you ask? Well, simply said, it improves your odds to encounter a shiny Pokemon by quite a bit. Be aware that this is only a black and white 2 obtainable item, and you need to finish the national Pokedex first, in order to obtain it. After you have that key item in your bag, it will automatically be activated, and your chances from this point will be 1 in 2730 when encountering a wild Pokemon and even 1 in 1024 when combining it with the Masuda method. Cons The shiny locks Well, unfortunately, with this generation onwards, Game Freak introduced us to another trend, which will continue up then in every generation since. The shiny locks You remember those big legendary box art Pokemon? Oh boy, I really want to hunt a shiny Reshi- Nope! You heard it right. Reshiram for example, Zekrom and Victini, as Pokemon you could obtain in the overworld, are programmed to be never shiny. And this is a trend continuing. Just take a look at how many Pokemon are shiny locked from generation 5 onwards. It's ridiculous. Oh, and also the hidden grotto in black and white too. Those Pokemon you can encounter there are also shiny locked and will never be shiny. The same applies to the Dream World Pokemon. But since you can't encounter them anywhere anymore, this problem doesn't even exist technically. Why Game Freak decided to do this is a whole topic on its own, but I would like to hear your opinion on why they did it in the comments below. Older generation Pokemon only after the Elite Four. Black and White One. In the first entry of the Generation 5 games, in Pokemon Black and White, you have to complete the main story before even have the chance to encounter the majority of the known Kanto, Johto, Hoenn and Sinnoh Pokemon. So let's say, if you want to hunt for a shiny Aaron, you have to face the gym leaders and the Elite Four first, before you can even set up your hunt. This makes the options what to hunt for way more restrict, unfortunately. In Black and White 2, they fortunately changed their course and added a good mix of local Pokemon and ones from previous generations, so you can shiny hunt them without completing the whole story first. That's it for today, folks! What did you think are the pros and cons when hunting in Generation 5? What shiny Pokemon you got there? Please let me know in the comments below. I hope you liked the little series so far. As usual, if you do, please leave a like. If you don't, leave a dislike. Thanks for sticking around. See ya!